first question, I think most of us sort of take for granted, you know, that we understand how the universe began with the Big Bang or so, but as I understand it, constructive theory is now offering a new way of thinking about that. I was wondering if you might be able to explain a bit more about that and how constructive theory offers an alternative to the existing models. Well, yes, I mean, this is, of course, um, uh, a program we have. Um, so I'll, I'll explain the gist of it with the idea that this is something we would like to do. Um, so the, the standard way of describing the universe uh, that we've had so far is to try to guess a, a law that, that explains what trajectory the universe is on. And that means just like you would do with a, with a ball and uh, you know, when you kick it and you would like to know where it goes, um, all the points in space-time that it goes through uh, from the start to the end, you'd like to do the same with the universe. And, and we have some candidates for that, but um, there is of course a problem in setting the initial conditions and also in explaining why some initial conditions as opposed to others. Uh, constructive theory has a completely different approach to explaining physics. So instead of talking about laws of motion, trajectories and things like that, uh, the main statements of the theory are about what transformations are possible or impossible on a particular subset of systems of the universe. And then from those constraints, for example, an example of those constraints could be the conservation of energy, which we already know about, but constructive theory adds additional constraints. From those constraints, you construct the dynamical laws that are compatible with that and the initial conditions and therefore those constraints become the explanations for those dynamical laws and initial conditions. So the logic is somehow inverted. And there is an idea that this uh, could be more fruitful in solving some of these problems that currently we have with the initial conditions of the universe. But of course, as I said, this is a problem, so this is something we are trying to work out. And first we are applying to construct a theory to a subsystem of the universe to find predictions about certain other problems. The cosmological problem is, is a very interesting one but it's something that is going to be worked out in the future. For doing the physics job, you have to um, solve problems that come up in your understanding of physical reality the way you uh, see it around you. And in a way, it's, it's very uh, simple, the, the way you do that. It's just you come up with explanations that seem to make sense of those problems and solve them. So for example, when you, know, you, you, you saw the, the sky being uh, full of stars and planets and things like that, and at some point we were wondering why is it that they seem to move, and why is it that the sun seems to move, and why is it that this doesn't fit with the idea that the Earth is at the center of the universe, which was what we thought initially. And that was a problem, and, and we found a way of explaining the reality better in the way that the, the problem dis was dissolved with, with Newton's laws and gravitation, etc., etc. So for that type of activity, you don't really need to think that out there there is or there isn't a particular law. You're just trying to address a problem in your understanding. Um, of course, it might be more um, beautiful in a way to think that there is reality out there, and that's actually my view. Uh, but it's a way, in a way, it's an assumption that I, I'm making um, to make my worldview more consistent. The idea that actually there are laws out there and I'm trying to discover them. And this is all tentative. We can never know that the law that we have is the right one. But what we can say is whether it is or is not problematic. And if it is, then we can try to find one that isn't um, by solving problems. So I'm thinking the fundamental thing that you have to uh, assume is a way, in a way is the idea that you want to solve problems and then you have a way of solving them by coming up with new explanations. And then if you like, you can say, oh, well, actually these explanations are trying to reach for these actual laws that are out there. I like to think it like that, but I don't think it's necessary. Well, well there is one important thing about science, which is that uh, it has to be a uh, criticizable so you know you come up with a new idea to describe the universe and then you have to give the means to the scientific community to assess whether that idea does or doesn't solve the problem that you uh, came up with that idea for and and the way you the usual way in which physics does that the critics the, the way in which you criticize theories in physics is to test their predictions 
So um, I would say there's a requirement for explanations in physics that they should be testable because that's the way in which you can find errors or mistakes and, and make progress tentatively. So it's not quite just up to the physicists to believe in what they're doing. Uh, there is this idea that whatever they come up with to solve a particular problem should be, uh, should be possible to be assessed by this, this testing business um, in a way that, that if it's wrong, it can be replaced. Otherwise, we enter the domain of, of these other theories, which are dogmatic theories where, um, you know, for example, religion is an example of that, where you have a um, set of truths uh, which are just there and they can't be criticized, but that's not science. So, so if you want to do physics, um, ultimately you have to, you know, you have to test your theories against uh, experiments and that's the way you find errors in, in, in them. Well, I would say dogmatism is, is perhaps informs a, a view of, of describing reality which is a little bit, I mean, is a bit limited because, uh, as I said, as soon as you stick to a dogma, then you are not free of making criticisms about it. So if at some point something arises around you which doesn't quite fit the dogma, you're not allowed by the rules of dogmatism to say, well, maybe I have to change the dogmas and you know, incorporate a new statement to make sense of what's going on. So I think dogmatism is just perhaps a bad way of explaining reality and that science at least is free of this um, idea that, that there can't be errors. It's a very uh, liberatory type of view that you know, you're allowed to make mistakes and actually making mistakes is good. And we'll find them, we're saying at some point that we should, we should find out our mistakes as fast as possible because that's actually what you do when you do physics. You make, you, know, you, you make an assumption, then you question it, you try to probe it with your own self, see whether you can find some contradiction. If not, then you talk to your colleague and then he's going to say, well, actually, I don't think it works like that. It's a bit different and so on. And ultimately, you test it against experiments. And, and the fact that you are allowed to change your mind is actually the most powerful thing in science. Um, I, I quite like this. Uh, well, there are a number of things. So I quite like the, the um, uh, interdisciplinary aspect. So the fact that um, all of these debates and talks, etc., are not phrased in, in, in terms of the actual topics that arise within disciplines, but they try to address big problems like, um, you know, is, is there uh, reality or not, um, etc. And, and these type of problems are, um, by nature, they are cross-discipline which is why the festival is so interesting. This is something we can't do in departments because you know, there's just physics department, there's a mathematics department, there's a philosophy department, and we're just divided by subject. But actually, it's quite uh, contrary to the spirit of scientific investigation and more broadly, intellectual investigation, because we are solvers of problems, and problems are cross-discipline by their own nature. So I guess epistemologically, this festival is actually quite right in the way it's, it's constructed, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, and of course, also, I quite like the relaxed atmosphere, the fact that everyone is here to enjoy themselves, because I think that's ultimately what we do when we do physics, in my case, or we are up to our intellectual endeavors for, for the other people here. We're actually having fun. So answering all of these questions is fun, and finding an answer is fun, and this is uh, an underlying theme of this festival, and that's what I like in it. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.